a playlist original. Welcome to the Pilot Podcast, where we review the pilot episodes of TV shows to answer your question, should I watch this? My name is Me Too. And my name is BJ. And this week, we're watching Mr. and Mrs. Smith on Prime Video. So stay tuned to find out if Me Too dreams of being a super spy. Oh, I bet you'd be surprised by my answer. Me or the listener? (laughs) Everybody. (laughs) Before that, I will introduce the show to us. In this show, we meet the Smiths, two lonely strangers and highly skilled assassins, John and Jane, played by Donald Glover and Maya Erskine. They gave up their lives and identities to be thrown together as partners, both in espionage and in marriage. So, Me Too, offline, we were talking about the 2005 film. How do you feel about a television reboot? I love how in work mode you are to say offline. We (laughs) offlined this conversation. So, sorry to everyone else in this Zoom. BJ and I did offline about the 2005 (laughs) Mr. and Mrs. Smith film. So circling back to that, I thought it was very, very smart that Donald Glover did not try to go for that vibe. It is such a uniquely fierce movie with such a uniquely hot chemistry that I was concerned when I saw the two leads because I'm accustomed to them in very different kinds of roles, more awkward things, more funny things. And they really struck the balance, Donald Glover and Francesca Sloan, between the chemistry of Mr. and Mrs. Smith, because I really did believe the chemistry between John and Jane, and in this new version, bringing this energy of awkward millennials trying to get to know each other and do a good job. I will have to say, as someone who barely remembers the film, more is just like two sexy hot people as spies. (laughs) I do (laughs) appreciate that this is different. And I think the comedy, awkward character history for both of the actors plays really well into the chemistry between their characters. Because I really liked seeing them interact. And there's the will they, won't they hints of flirting, which is combined with just general awkward human beings. Yes. And they get to flirting pretty quickly, which made me really believe their attraction. It didn't feel unrealistic, but it just felt like, wow, y'all are into each other. But you don't quite know how to say it, so you're doing silly get-to-know-you games and pretending that you needed to pick up a spill by tearing off your shirt. I was shocked how quickly John was like, so are you in this for romance? We're married. We could (laughs) do the romance part. How do you feel about romance? (laughs) (laughs) And she was like, okay, well, it's been great knowing you for the past 14 hours. I will continue to determine if this marriage is fake or if we need to make this Uh, A real coupling. Some people don't want to wait. What's your, based solely on the pilot, opinion of the will they, won't they for their romance? They for sure will. Oh. They're going to make it. I love their chemistry. And I like that they're both clearly hiding secrets. But they're, I think, surprising themselves by revealing more of themselves to each other. Which in turn lets us as the viewer obviously get to know them and their secrets better. Though with that, the episode was a little long. There was a little bit too much time watching them text and be awkward and not enough action for something in the Mr. and Mrs. Smith universe. And I felt like the couple reveals that we got, really one main half reveal and an action scene, those weren't enough of a payoff for me for an hour-long episode paced the way that it was paced. I completely agree. I feel like it's tough when you introduce us to two people who, because of the nature of their job, are mysteries. We don't know about their past. We don't know their real names. They're even hesitant to tell each other those secrets. And instead, we spend maybe 40 minutes, 45 minutes of them learning to work together and decide how comfortable they are with each other. And then we get some cool action. And that was a big ask from the people behind this show. 
You know, it's so silly. I didn't even connect it until you said it that they're John and Jane, right? We don't even know mm-hmm. their names. We don't know exactly what they were up to before this. We get some hints mm-hmm. of it when we see them interviewing for this secret spy agency. The spy agency, we don't know what it is, what it's Mm-mm. called, if it is even a spy agency or if it's something else. We don't know. We don't know anything. And the way that they choose to reveal themselves to each other, it is interesting hearing mm-hmm. them talk about childhood stories and then the mistrust that comes up of like, I can't even tell if you're making this up or if this <laughs> funny thing really did happen to you as a kid. Mm-hmm. But I agree that it's not enough when we think about the larger stakes. And when we just dis- try to discover what the larger stakes even are. Exactly. We still aren't sure what the stakes are. We know that they received a mission. They will probably receive more missions. They're not even sure what the missions are about because they're left in the dark about a lot of things. Like, why were they paired together? And because there's so many questions, it makes me have a hard time caring about what happens next. I need a goal. I think for me, I'm intrigued because what drives two people from such seemingly different backgrounds to interview with a robot kiosk machine thing, you'll understand when you watch the episode, to work for an agency. We don't know the name. We don't know its motivation. You're interviewing in this creepy warehouse. And you have this history of some kind of government or military spy work. It went left and now you find yourself here. That is very intriguing to me. It's very intriguing that they're willing to go outside of what they used to do, but to keep fighting and doing dangerous things, and that they both selected high stakes danger. Because when you interview for this agency, you can basically do same way when you (laughs) set up your 401k at work. If you have a 401k, if you're risk averse, If you are high risk or if you're somewhere in the middle and they both said high risk, they said gamble my retirement right now. And that makes me interested in their past. I want to know who they were. We got a few hints like you were saying. And I don't know. I care more about the past than the future. And I don't think we're going to focus on the past as much as I would like in the show. And I also think that's why... They might not end up together because I think as those secrets get revealed, which I expect them to, it might create some awkward dynamics, like when someone admits how many people they've killed on purpose. I think it'll be rom-com style where, you know, something will be revealed too far and they're like, rut row, who am I sleeping next to? And they break up, but then by the end, they're fighting side by side. So they'll have a happy ending. Kind of. They're still fighting for their lives. So do you think this will be like a one season show or like they'll be happy and then, uh uh-oh, something else happened to Mr. and Mrs. Smith? (laughs) Hopefully they'll get more seasons and I feel comfortable going into ratings for that. For Mr. and Mrs. Smith on Prime Video, I want to watch again casually. This awkward millennial take on a spy thriller from the minds behind Atlanta I'm in. I'm interested. I think your point is very valid. I am definitely more interested in John and Jane. So looking back, understanding who they are, their motivations versus the mystery ahead. But I'm still intrigued and I want to watch more. And I did read something from the co-creator basically saying that this is a light spoiler. They wrapped the show in such a way that You should hopefully feel satisfied with one season, but if they get another season, there's more story to tell. That's good to know. I really prefer when people behind shows, the showrunners, writers, etc., plan for a satisfying conclusion rather than really expecting that second, third, fourth season to even get through their story. Because on (laughs) Netflix.com, the number of shows I've been like, Wow, I can't wait to understand this huge thing that has just been revealed in the final 20 seconds. And then I'll text you about the show or I'll Mm -hmm. I'll go on Google.com. Boom. No more episodes of that show. That's it. 
That was me and Teenage Bounty Hunters. I'm still very hurt over that cancellation. Netflix, you can still write that wrong. We can bring that show back. It's been a few years. And fakes. They just ended mid-plot. Another show where it was just so good. And then that last few moments, you're like, wow, I will be sat a few months from now when we definitely get season two because this is the number one viewed show on Netflix according to their own little dashboard for all this time. <laughs> now you've opened up a door to a rant. <laughs> you have some strong feelings about Netflix and their practices. <laughs> and then you Google that show and then boom, no more episodes. It's not just Netflix. It's a lot of these streamers. That math on top watch show, I don't understand it because then those top 10 shows do not be getting renewed. Yeah. Views don't mean anything. No. But back to Mr. and Mrs. Yes, Smith. Yes, sorry. <laughs> You're good. Gotta let it out. We have opinions about television, and that's why we're here to that's share true. them. That's true. That's true. I just love TV. I would rate this would watch again while cooking. I actually watched this first episode while cooking, and I think that worked really well. <laughs> <laughs> a little distracted, but I saw the action I learned a bit about these characters, and I'm still hesitant about how much longer I'll keep going, but I do have to cook some more meals. I will say, if you're looking for essentially another of the Angelina Jolie movie, do not watch this show, because you're not going to get that. But if you're comfortable with an awkward, funny take on that film, then I think you'd like it. There you go. So, me too. Would you like to be a super spy? No. So if you want to find more episodes of the Pilot Podcast, head to our website at thepilotpodcast.com, and you can follow us on all of your favorite podcast platforms. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at thepilotpod, and you can send thoughts, feelings, show recommendations, because every other week we do a show recommended by you, our wonderful listeners, to askthepilotpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. Bye.